Hello. Hello. You are Jason and Kristen. How's your name? Why are you so quiet? This is my this is my quiet voice. Okay. Am I supposed to be something other than that? <laughs> Do you? Okay. We are Twin Flames and Harmonious Twin Flame Union, and we are here to share with you our exploration of being autistic. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing here. Yep. This video is titled, Running Away From Home. Running from your twin flame. Yeah. Um, autistic style. Autistic style. <laughs> um, yeah, like, um, I know all kids probably, have you ever like you know did the whole I'm gonna uh, I'm running away from home all the time thing, right I think kids do that in general um, I did that uh, probably a, a, a zillion times right like uh, yeah. I think that there's different reasons why I did that versus like why like another kid might do that like. Hmm. Um, I, I read research though that autistic children are, tend to be runners. Really? Yeah, like autistic kids run away. I see. Yeah. I would say like, what would you say the reason why like a child would want to run run away from home? Like just a just your <laughs> <Not> a question. <laughs> what? Um, I think they just I okay. Like if you if they like don't stories, get what they want. Like they, they, they run to somebody who will give them what they want. So if their parents aren't giving them what they want, they threaten they, to run away. They run away to like grandma's house. They true, want to go true. to grandma's house. Or like there's, you know, some. Right. Because grandma will know, give them what they want. Not so good things going on in the house. Yeah. And, and they like, just want, they want right? to run. And mm -hmm. like um, my, with the reason why I would run or, you know, pack my bag and do the whole thing was because something probably, uh, and, and all the times that I can remember, um, righteously ex like upset me uh, to the point where um, I I didn't know what to do to handle my feelings, mm -hmm. and so like I would that would be the only way that I can get like space to right. handle myself, and then like I was okay. Yeah, you were seeking you were seeking space. Yeah. So, so I wasn't doing it to like, um, you know, get something, get what I wanted, like get a toy or, you know, whatever, get yeah. something that I wanted. Like I would do it to, uh, because I, I, I didn't know how else to, to handle my feelings. Um, and my emotions were very intense. And so that was, that was like the way for me to um, handle myself. Yeah, I remember you telling me stories like you would run away to like the backyard. Yeah, I wouldn't like run away. I would like go hide behind a tree in the yard with my suitcase. That's cute. Um, um, that's I, I would run away. Oh, okay. I would yeah, like I, I would pack my shit and go. I wasn't like um, under the impression that I was, you know, where would I where would I go at whatever mm -hmm. however many years old I was. Like um, yeah, I've experienced that with you. I wasn't trying to wind, yeah. wind up on the back of a milk carton. Oh, um, I didn't care where I wound up. I just didn't want to be there anymore. Okay, so that's why I ran. Okay, and so like that's interesting. Um, what I found was, you know, looking back on all of um, you know, my life, I guess, and just like different types of running, uh, mm -hmm. running away was. Always at the uh, at the core of it was um, not being able to handle my emotions and needing to like get somewhere safe or get into a um, environment where um, I wasn't overloaded with emotion and I could handle myself mm -hmm. uh, and then you know I'd be cool. Yeah, so we're talking about like a safe place here yeah, is sure. what you're seeking. So safe places are really popular. Uh, we both have like this need for safety uh, when we're moving through things like this. And like for me, safety is being held. So like if that's by a bunch of pillows or that's by Jason, I just feel safe in being held. Uh, and so that's for me what a safe place is. Like for you, it's actually more tangible. Mm -hmm. it's like literally a space 
Well, and, and something that like, you know, we were, we were invited to do was to like, um, come up with a plan, like a mm -hmm. VAC plan or something like yeah. that, where it's just like, if you feel, um, a situation like this coming on where there's a lot of emotions or there's a meltdown coming on, like you have a plan to in place where this is what you do and it calms, calms you down. And so like, mm -hmm. um, what I found, uh, in the initial, the uh, initial goings of this was to like, just start cooking. Like uh, when I start cooking, like it puts me in a uh, safe space and it might, yeah. And I just keep cooking until, so it could be hours mm -hmm. and I'll just keep finding things to cook. Mm -hmm. uh, and like, or just, you know, uh, working um, in that capacity, like really uh, helps me to like ground and center myself. Yeah, and during these times, like I don't enter the kitchen. Like I really give Jason space there. there. Yeah, I'm really not. <laughs> Uh, I go in there from time to time, but very sparingly. And uh, yeah, it's his, it's his space in the home. The kitchen is his space in the home. And so uh, when he's like, you know, really needing time, I can tell when he's in a very meditative space and just like processing things and that cooking helps him ground that. And so that's something, that's a spiritual practice for him really mm. cooking. Yeah. And like, right. Um putting that in place or finding that avenue was, uh, was like, you know, <laughs> such a, it was a, it was a great like find for me. Yeah. It was a deep relief in our relationship yeah. too, because when we got in some really big fights and, you know, we had blowouts, um, like he'd pack a bag and try to leave and it would be very upsetting to me. And so I remember this one time, I'd be like, where are you going? Like, where, where are you going to go? And he would be standing outside. I don't know. <laughs> I was like, okay, so how about you come back inside? And at this time we didn't know we were autistic. We had no idea what we were moving through. And so like, I realized somewhere along the way that he's not actually going to leave. He just needs to go through this process. And through this process, he gains clarity and, come, and, come, and comes back in the house every time. It's just like he was moving through this childhood uh, programming of leaving the house and going outside in the backyard. And so like we had to move through that and you know there was a lot of mirroring for me. This is what we do, we do the mirror exercise. It's a process, uh, it's a four step process of loving yourself. And what it does is you find, you know, any upset that you're having and you essentially turn it onto yourself. And so, you know, Jason's upsetting me because he's leaving me. I'm upsetting myself because I'm leaving myself. Is that true in any way? Am I not honoring myself? If I, am I not honoring my authentic self within me? And if so, why not? And get clear there, is that true? And then love myself there and bring that part of me home, integrate her into who I am today. This is the mirror exercise uh, that's taught by Jeff and Shalia at Twin Flames Universe. And it's something that we do every single day. And through this process, we uh, take essentially re like control of our reality. And we simply move through it knowing that our relationship with God is the most important thing in our life. It's at the center of our life. It's at the center of our marriage. And also that that's our safe place. God is our safe place. And so if we're moving through anything and we always return to God, God's, God's will be done. Uh, we will find truth. We will find peace. And we, as we, pro I've, as we've implemented this process in our life, we've experienced that. And in my opinion, having experienced this with Jason, and this running energy, this is how we healed it. We healed it with the mirror exercise and having faith in the process that it will always take us deeper into love and peace. And so uh, that was a very scary time for me. But what I found is that as we've unpacked this, this is what it was. It was Jason trying to find his safe place and trying to find where that is as an adult, right? And so he found it in the kitchen. He found it in our home. And that grounds us deeper into our relationship as he's coming to that awareness. Well, since we since we found out uh, about the autism spectrum, like um, we aren't like um, we haven't. I don't think that we we've been like uh, operating in the same way that we used to. Where yeah, hundred percent. Where we both may get like triggered to an extreme. 
right? Because we didn't know how to handle that, like that. Um, uh, Energy? Any, like, yeah, like, well, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, I came to a point where we just didn't choose that anymore and we, and we made a new core choice and commitment. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm really talking about like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, taking things to the extent that like they would become so trick, like very triggering or very mm -hmm. like uh, intense uh, because we didn't know otherwise. Right. And so um, once we did, like we haven't had that no we haven't we haven't even come close to anything like that mm -hmm. so like it was really um i think that was before we found out we were autistic though that's what i said oh okay Sorry. so like um yeah it, it's just like been that that piece of knowledge has been mm -hmm. very helpful in our relationship because like now we we can understand where one another is coming from and know not to push somebody uh over the edge i guess right. or something like mm -hmm. not intentionally right uh, but like we know we know the limits of uh not pushing someone over the edge so that the, those things don't escalate to yeah there's more compassion you know, in our union yeah. in that space i think we're more compassionate with one another as we figure this out it's good mm -hmm. yeah and so um how did you go through the process of releasing an old safe place and creating a new one. How did that feel for you as you've moved through your life? Because a lot of times like the safe space is your child is your home, your child's at home. And how did you? Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that that was, you know, no matter where I was, I, that would be, that was home. Mm -hmm. That was your safety you know, net for a long time. That was my safety net. Mm -hmm. uh no matter what, what age i was like yeah you know no matter what happened like go home mm -hmm. even if you didn't live there that was the <laughs> that was the place to go yeah uh and yeah it, you have to retrain yourself um uh, really find find safety within uh knowledge and understanding and you know clarity is is a big part of you know finding a new safe space and new safe things and that that just takes like diligent work to retrain retrain yourself in that way i think mm -hmm. yeah so like uh what i've found is that i don't have to go to any particular place, uh, especially just because it's like a, a very familiar place that I've gone to, you know, my whole life, but that doesn't have to be my safe space. My space, my safe space is like cultivated within myself um, mm -hmm. and giving myself the space to uh, do whatever I need to do, feel, you know, to, to feel good, to feel to calm down, to, to feel safe. Uh, and I can, you know, make that wherever, wherever I want it to be. And it's now like my home, my family, uh, that's my safe space. Uh, most, most, more specifically my kitchen, most, li <laughs> most likely. Um, and it's, it's a continued exploration to, kind of refine that that's that safety and where you feel where I feel secure uh, where I feel safe and so I'm sure as as uh, time goes on it may evolve from the kitchen to who knows other other places <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. Okay. but uh right now it just feels good to like have have that plan in place mm -hmm. um and not have to like i guess just endure uh a meltdown or um you know uh something of like a sensory overload uh without something in, with just like willy-nilly you know just like out there in the wind so um 
Yeah, great. Great find for me. And like, hopefully that, you know, that helps uh, some of you. I think that's all we have for this week. Okay, great, babe. We will see you next time. See you later. Bye.